A couple of years ago, you contributed to a book by your sister Jessie called Resilience. It was about her upbringing uh, for all of you and your siblings. It was complicated, a very fractured family. She was undiagnosed as bipolar until the age of 50. And you wrote passages in the book with your perspective of what was happening to her and your family. I bring it up because it is such a valuable book for anybody who may be suffering or think they're suffering or has a loved one who's suffering. Mm -hmm. It's a really beautifully written book. And so honest. So honest. She does not let herself, I mean, it's that, it, that moved me, the courage to be so brutally honest. It's a beautiful story. People know the story, but your, your family was in a religious organization. Many people would call it a cult called the Moral Rearmament. And mm -hmm. your, your parents at a delicate time in their own lives joined it and were taken away from the kids and the kids kind of were scattered to the, to the wind. And um, there was a lot of suffering mm -hmm. that went on because of it, which she writes so beautifully about in the book. And so do you. But the end of that story is that there was a tremendous amount of forgiveness. Mm. It seems that you, at I, the I end, had forgiven each, your yeah, parents. Each of us had to go through that process of forgiveness. Um, it wasn't easy for my parents to talk about, certainly my father. Mm. Um, but I guess I've made my career figuring out the whys of behavior, and I did the same thing with my parents. And I've learned more and more about them and more about what their situation was and how vulner vulnerable they were at certain times. So I think I really understand why they were so uh, vulnerable to a group like that, um, not knowing the devastation that it would right. cause their children. Um, but it, you know, my dad was seven when he was sent away to, to boarding school and um, it was traumatic for him, but you know he visited the same thing upon his kids. There came a point where um, I got very, very angry at my father, and um, I wrote him this letter where I was absolutely honest. I said, "You don't, you, you don't deserve the to be to be called our father." I mean, mm -hmm. it was so harsh. In fact, I I read it to my mother and I read it to my siblings. I said, I'm just going to send this to dad because he was he was a narcissist mm -hmm. and he was brilliant, brilliant. But he definitely had a dollop of narcissism. And I think, you know, women and I could do it. I did it with him. And I think my mom did it. You say, oh, but we know that underneath there's this fragility and he really is, uh, you know, wanting to be loved because he was abandoned. And, you know, you have to prove that you're worth loving and so you're this. Um, and I think that goes to a certain point, but you have to make sure that it doesn't go to the point where you're an enabler. And I think in many ways, my mom enabled him. She never developed her where she was brilliant, you know, and, and to the point where she said to me near the end of her life, I feel like I haven't achieved anything. And um, I think there are a lot of women who go through that. <laughs>